Hey everyone, it's Bobby from Decoding here and this is another video for my Building a User App in Django playlist. But before I jump into the code, if this is the first time that you've visited Decoding, then please subscribe to the channel. And also don't forget to like this video and leave me a comment because I love seeing the feedback. Also, if you want to support the channel, there's a link to my Patreon page in the description below. So without further ado, let's jump into the code. If you look at my screen, Got a command prompt open here. So first and foremost, we need to uh, fire up the virtual environment, right? So we've got virtual environment wrapper installed. Uh, so we can just use, use the command work on. So we want to first and foremost CD into development, which is my development directory. And the project is called um, dd underscore user, did demo underscore user. And if we put work on, dd underscore user that should fire up the virtual environment there you go so on the left hand side when it's in brackets that means it's working and what we'll then do is oh, we won't do anything there we'll just open up sublime text which is my text editor if i go there okay this is the project this is where we got to i think in the last video we started looking at forms so uh looking back actually i've kind of skipped a couple of bits like we created some models in a couple of videos previous to this one uh, i should then have created a signals file so we'll do that quickly and then we'll create some mix-ins we'll flesh out some views and just get as much of the project done as we can in this tutorial before we run out of gas and then i'll close it off and we'll do another video and um, follow on from there so this is the project if you've been following along which i hope you have let's start off by creating a signals uh, file in the users app so new file save as oh that's not if we put sorry clunky as ever save as signals.py so if you don't know what signals are essentially we can use signals to do something when a object has been saved to the database, for instance. So this would be post save. So after an object has been saved, you can do something. Now this signal will be, it will be, it will be a function that will be receiving a signal from the built-in user model. And from that signal, it will work out whether or not an object has been created. If it has been created, then what we'll do is we will then subsequently create a user profile, which we've already built in this tutorial. So what we'll do, um, I will copy across my code from the other screen and I'll talk you through it. Paste. So we're importing post save. So the post save gets passed through to the receiver decorator here. So we need post save from DB model signals. Uh, we're bringing in the built-in user model from auth models. We've got receiver, which is a decorator that we'll be using. And also we're bringing in user profile, which is the model we've built. This is what extends in the way of a one-to-one one -one field, the uh, built-in user model. So we put the receiver here and we pass through post save. So this is when the object has been saved. The sender is the built-in user model. So that is the model that we are listening out for. So then we've got a function here called create profile. We pass through the sender, which in this case is user. Instance, which is the instance of the model, so the uh, object itself, created, and then keyword arguments. If created, so if the object has been created, do something. And what we're doing here is creating a variable called user profile, and then we are creating an object. So user profile dot objects dot create, and we're passing through instance. So user equals instance because this is a one to one field, and that is all you need for this particular signal. But for the app to start that signal or, or activate that function, we need to add something to the apps dot py file. And that is we need to overwrite the ready function. So def ready, we pass through self and we return, oh no, sorry, we import and this will be users.signals. Now this little bit of code here will essentially, when the app gets fired up because the user app is in the installed apps in settings, uh, settings, there we go, we've got users here. When the user app is fired up, it will then run this piece of code on ready and it'll import signals and that signal will then be uh, active for every time a user is created in the database. So we'll save that. That is signals and what we'll now do is we create another file in users called mixins. We can call this what you like really. It doesn't necessarily need to be mixins, but this, these are functions that can be reused throughout the project. And in this particular one, we will, uh, so we'll save this as in this particular one, we're gonna be doing something with the SMS function. So this will be a function to allow us to work with SMS messages for verification. So we'll call this mixin.py. 
and I'll bring in all of my code from the other screen. Straight away, I need, I need to use this. Sorry, I need to change this. So it's DD users mixins import create SMS. Well, we haven't created this file yet, but we'll do that in a second. So we're bringing in user token from our models, importing six string random phone numbers and PY country. So these here, if just take my requirements, make sure that we've got them in here. So we have installed it, uh, phone numbers and we've also in, um, brought in countries as well, I believe is what it's called. PY country, so let's just make sure that's in. So that is in our requirements. If it's not, you need to run the command pip install PY country and pip install phone numbers. We need that for the um, activate two-step function that we're gonna go into detail in a second. Um, we don't need this, so forget that. And we don't need user session because we haven't built that. I was uh, adapting this app for my actual live website decoding and uh, I had, was having a few problems with the user app so I was, I was having to tinker with some other different functions. Anywho, right, so we've got a class here called Activate Two Steps. So this class will be used for our users to toggle whether or not they want to sign in to our app with uh, two-step verification. So you get this in a lot of websites, right? So you sign up, you'll, so it's, you'll sign in with your username and password, and then it will ask you to input a six-digit code that we sent to you via an SMS message. So that's what that's doing. So we've got an init function here, so we're done doing it, we're passing through keyword arguments, and we will also be passing through to this class, the user in the quarks and the token in the quarks. So this will be the token that we are playing around with in the models.py file, user token here. So we'll be creating a token in there. We haven't got the function to do that yet, but I'll show you what to do in a second. And then we're running through this bit of code here to create a six digit code made up of integers. So we've got size six, that's how many integers we're using. So chars equals string dot digits. And then code equals, we're joining together the six um, codes. So we're joining together the six integers. So it's a random choice of characters. So we're using this. And, and we're joining it together with range size. So the, six, so the size is six integers. So essentially the, the, the code will look something like, yeah, uh, and that will be passed through to the SMS. So we then got user token. So we create an object in the user token model and we add the user. It's a foreign key, not one-to-one. -one. So we add user, the token is the token, which is um, token is passed through to keyword arguments. Two-step code is the code that we just created here and is SMS equals true. Because if you remember in models, the token model uh, can be used for password, verification, password, password changes, email verification, and SMS verification also. <clears throat> so we then have this bit of code here. Let me enlarge that so you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, so we use phone numbers and PY country libraries to convert telephone numbers into usable formats for Twilio. Okay, so we're using Twilio as the um, software provider to actually send the SMS message and we create a few variables here so country code so we get the country code from py countries okay using this code here so it's pycountries.countries.get and we pass through the country assigned to the user profile and what we're then calling is alpha2 um, which is all in the docs for py country the number object we're using phone numbers and we pass the telephone number and the country code that we just created is this variable and then the telephone number we use an f string to create a telephone number that is that can be used by Twilio. That's the whole point in doing these three lines lines of code is to create a text string of a telephone number that can be used so we can send an SMS message. And then we call a function called create SMS. We haven't written that yet, but we will do. And we're passing through number and messages. Okay, so that's what we're doing in that mix-ins. So we'll save that. And the other untitled one, we will save as, and we'll save it into the DD user file, and we'll call this mixins.py. Great, and then we will, I'll copy over again for my screen. There's a lot going on in this one. We're creating emails and all sorts of stuff. So I have imported a whole bunch of stuff here. So we're importing JSON response, uh, because some of this is for Ajax. We're bringing in settings from conf. We've got render redirect reverse, which you'd normally only see these in views, but these are uh, reusable functions that we're using in views. 
And then got the password reset token generator from Auth tokens. We've got get current site. And there's a few other bits and pieces here that we're using for emails and so on and so forth. But this is required. All of these are required for this um, mix-ins file. We're also from Twilio. So you must have Twilio installed in requirements. And just double check that we have. There we go, Twilio. And it's pip install Twilio if you haven't. So go back into mix-ins here. So what we need to do first and foremost is create a class called token generator. It's this that will be used to create a hashed token, so an encoded token that can be used to change a user password, uh, verify an email, and we'll also be using it for SMS messages as well. So that it's uh, the password reset token generator is handy for passwords, but I found I can use it for other bits and pieces as well. And this is why we're installing six or importing six because it uh, creates a, um, uh, a an encoded string from the user primary key, the timestamp, and if the user is active. Okay, so that's what we're doing there. So it's a class token generator. We're then using Recapture. So Recapture is a software uh, created by Google which keeps riffraff out from um, submitting forms on your website. So you've seen this on uh, other websites where you might get presented with nine images and you've got to select any image that contains a bus, right? So that is a uh, that is version two, actually. We'll be using version three. So what it does, Google will score the form submission and the higher the score, the higher the chance it is that it's a real human being submitting the form. So we'll be using Recapture and this is the API. Okay, so we need to get uh, Google API keys, which uh, we will look into. Form errors, so this is just a function I use for um, Django Forms. So uh, I, I normally I Ajaxify forms in the back end. So we use Django model forms and built-in forms from Django. We submit the forms from the front end using Ajax, and then when handling that form submission, we use form errors and we overwrite things like form valid and form invalid. So that's what that function is doing, it's just working through errors from a form submission. Then we've got this, which is an Ajax form mixing. So again, we're writing over or overwriting the form invalid and the form valid functions, which this is kind of this, this in this mixing file becomes the default. So if you're not passing through a message or a result to the form submission, it will default and it will just it just runs through this code here. We would need to import Ajax form mixing into our views, and then we add this into the form view, so it inherits from this, and, and that is how it overwrites the uh, form invalid and form valid fun uh, methods. Redirect params, I use this in a lot of my apps actually. So um, this is when we work with parameter strings, so it's not always useful to use URLs, um, overly complex URLs that are quite ugly. What I sometimes use is just a normal basic URL and I use parameter strings to pass through a search or filter. And this is what it's doing. You pass, you pass through a URL, so a redirect URL. You pass through a whole bunch of parameters and it creates a parameter string that can be appended to a URL. So the parameter string might look like question mark um, color equals black and size equals small, okay? And that would then be appended to a URL which could be https demo.com and then it will be question mark dot, 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 dot. and that's how it would work, okay? So that's what we're using redirect params for and we're using URL encode for that. Then we've got a create email class. So this is taken straight out of the docs. It's just been adapted for my own use. Uh, we're passing through args and keywords, keyword arguments. And to create an email, you need to pass through all of this here. So we've got the email account. So who we're sending it to, the subject, the email. Um, sorry, the email account is who we're sending it from. The email is who we're sending it to. Then we've got the template. So we might want to use sign up email template. We might want to change uh, password template, so we need to create those and we pass through the actual template, context and a whole bunch of stuff like token, URL safe and things like that. But we'll be working through this when we create the uh, views. Current site, so this is um, this is actually in the database. When you're going to Django uh, admin, you change the site ID. So um, we would create, it defaults to example.com, but you'd want to ch change that to localhost in 
product development, but in production it will be your uh, domain. Um, so that and that then allows us to set the protocol for the um, domain. We're creating an F string using a protocol in the current site, so that'll be https forward slash did demo dot com. Um, context is the user and the domain. This allows us to uh, access the user and domain when writing uh, H raw HTML in the template itself. Then you've got if self token, if self URL. So just got some um, uh, some code here to work through those um, keyword arguments and do something with it. So email accounts. So this is just a dictionary that I use to um, select the email account we're sending from. Sometimes you want, might want more than one. So you might want a do not reply email address. So that could be do not reply at the demo.com. You might want support at the demo.com. This, this dictionary allows you to add more than one email account to be sent from. Then you've got HTML content. So this render to string will render all of the template and context that we pass through to the template to a string. And then you've got text content, which strips the tags. This is all important for um, sending the email using the get connection. And then we, yeah, we use with get connection, we pass through host port username, password, and use TLS. These are all important and we add these to the settings file for um, Gmail. We're using Gmail in this tutorial, but you can use anything such as Outlook. Just need to get the TLS and you need to get the host and the portal correct. And then as a connection, the message is e email multi alternatives and we pass through all of the variables we just created. We attach the alternatives to the message and then we send the message. So that's the create email class. And then this is the create SMS. This is what we just played around with or, or imported into the mix-ins in the previous uh, file. So this one here, we're importing from ddusermixins import create SMS. So that's what we're creating here. And this is just a class with a dunder in it method, passing through keyword arguments. This is the phone number for the user. And this is the message that we want to send to the user. Okay, so that's all we're passing through to this class. So the phone number that we're sending it to and the actual message. We get the SID, so these are for the Twilio API, so you need to get these from Twilio. Um, and then the client is the Twilio client, which is at the top here. This is Twilio client, yeah, so we're bringing in from twilio.rest import client as Twilio client, um, and we're passing through the SID and the token. And that then allows us to create an SMS message via Twilio. So they're the mix-ins. Um, I probably should have gone through those in a previous tutorial. I've kind of gone a little bit out of sync in this um, in this playlist, but hey ho, that is the way. Uh, we haven't really got time to go through views. I, I might make. Uh, I've already got the views in here, but they need fleshing out. So I'll do that in the next video, and we'll just go through and we'll flesh out all of these, and then start playing around with the front end. So we'll start creating the um, JavaScript, uh, the CSS, the HTML, and the templates. So that is the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful. Uh, it, again, like I said at the start of the video, if this is the first time you've visited Decoding, then please subscribe to the channel, like this video, and add a comment. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.